Welcome to Finished Work International Ministries, a ministry that is on the cutting edge, changing lives around the world. As you let God in today and apply the word, expect a divine encounter and supernatural transformation. It is impossible for you to be defeated when you have the revelation of the will of God. It is impossible for situations to subdue you when you walk in understanding of what God is saying to you. Let the finished work of Jesus determine what you pray. When God is your source, you don't look back. You keep looking forward. You keep trusting. God, I trust you. Here's Apostle Faith Man Obueda. So it is important that you cultivate faithfulness. This is how you rise to the top with your dreams, with your vision, that you stay faithful. Even when it looked like it's not produced. And that was the edge that Joseph had that his brothers never had. That was his edge. The guy was faithful. He was committed to something that many family members were not willing to be committed to. He stayed faithful. Because time... In tough time, one of the ways we know that you're a faithful person is when you have an opportunity to compromise, but you stayed faithful. You had an opportunity to walk away, huh? but you choose to stay faithful. You had an opportunity to say, well, I'm giving up, but you continued. That's, if you're not faithful, you cannot be useful. How, how are you going to be useful? God will find it difficult to work with an unfaithful man. If an unfaithful man is anointed, it's going to be a waste to God and to humanity because it's not going to be faithful. Oh? Because there are people that you see them, they say, okay, I'm in this city, nothing work. They move to the next city, nothing work. They move to the next city, nothing work. You know, they, they keep moving from place to place to make sure it's work by divine direction. And, and this is very important. Things don't just work by relocation. You can relocate by divine direction. This is where God wants me to be. And it's so important that you know where God wants you to be as you can put your energy there. You should know where God has planted you, where God has positioned you. You know, many years ago when God called me to preach, you know, when God called me to preach, I have not worked for any established firm where I receive salary. Maybe at the end of the month, they say, okay, take 10,000, take 15,000, take one naira, take whatever. There was not, I don't have that kind of experience. When God called me, I had no job that I could say, okay, from my job, I could have money to be able to finance the ministry. When God called me, I didn't have any family member who said, okay, this 100 million, uh, sorry, this is 100,000 naira. Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> this 100,000 naira. <laughs> and you support the vision. You support the dream. I didn't have anything like that. So there was nothing behind me or what I could have that could help me do what I want to do. But you know the most important thing is what God has said. You see, what God has said becomes the resources when you think from what God has said. I want to say that again. I said, what God has said becomes the resources when you think and act from what God has said. What God has said, he gave you a word. And he expects you to believe that word. And there are a lot of people that think that, well, I need to be in a place where they can see me. I need to be in a place where I can showcase my talent, where people can see me. Let me say this to you. You can make it to American Idol and never be an idol. But no, no recognition. You know why? Times and place are being directed by the Spirit. It is the Spirit that directs you to a place. A place where your gifting can be useful. A place where your gifting can profit you. And this is why we listen to the Holy Ghost. You can't go with your head. Romans 8.14. It said as many that are led by the Spirit of God. They are, what? They are the sons of God. So finding your place of, of greatness is important. We're talking so we're going to look at the last section. We'll look at faithfulness. There are key things I want to look at in this section. I pray I'll be able to put all together in this section. I'm going to look at trust. I'm going to look at trust. That's one of the key things I'm going to look at. I'm going to look at focus. That's another key thing I'm going to look at. I'm going to look at understanding boundaries. 
understanding boundaries, I'm going to look at instructions. Instructions. I probably will be able to tie all of this together in just in this section. I'm supposed to continue, but I want to round up this section. This, this just wanted to be like a three-part thing, but let's look at trust. How many of you wants to keep relationship with someone you can trust? Let me see your hand. Trust is a product is a product of integrity. Or we can use the word fruit. Trust is a fruit of integrity. It's a, it's a fruit of integrity. If I cultivate integrity, I can be trusted. And trust begins with what you say sometimes. People want to see how you're able to keep to your word. Amen. Huh? How to keep to your word. And then you doubt what they say. Have you had situations like that before? And you doubt what they say because they are not consistent. If you verify from this person and that person, it changes. Because they are not consistent in their word. When someone is like that, it's a very dirty state. True. You may run into help and not get the help. Why? Because you're not consistent with words. The person changes. He's not stable. He told me something different. He told me something different. He's not stable. That attitude is a mark of someone you can trust. Especially when you meet with people who don't tolerate that. There are people that may tolerate it for a while, but there are people that just cut off. That's the end of the relationship. You can't find your way back into that relationship because for them, trust is a currency. Hmm. Wow. Trust is a currency. There is so much you can benefit in life when you can be trusted. So much. Your, the tendency to be rich quickly information, when you can be trusted with resources, when you can be trusted with relationship, when you can be trusted with, with something that was given to you to deliver, when you can be trusted, there is so much you are bound to benefit when you can be trusted. Do you know that someone can trust you without proving you? They have not proved you, but they just trust you. When that happens for you, be very careful with it. See, when people trust you without proving you, make sure you protect it. Because it, you have to be proved before you're being trusted. But if you're trusted, when they have not proved you, my friend, fight to keep that trust. You know why? They have already wheeled out resources without thinking. That is the point where most people miss it. They trusted you. They didn't, even, they didn't ask you, where did you come from? Where is your tribe? Where do you come from? They didn't, ask, they didn't care about anything. They just trusted you with a the check. They just trusted you with the relationship. They just trusted you with their children. They just trusted you with their future. They just trusted you with their business. My friend, you got a good mind. You better protect it. You know why? That you look out for when they are dealing with you. They are looking at trust. If a bank is going to give you a loan, one of the things they look out for, how trustworthy you are. They have been doing business with you for five years or for ten years or for three years. They are consistency. They are watching can you be can they predict you? Can you be predicted? Can they predict you? Can they say that she will do this? You know, the Bible said Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. That is how God wants you to be the same today, tomorrow. <laughs> you know what that means? He doesn't change. <laughs> Hallelujah. He doesn't change. It's not expecting you to be 
defecting like some people are <laughs> That's not what he's expecting from you. He, he expects you to remain the same. And what does, what does that mean? Is that you have come to a place where you... One of the pillars that hold the purpose is called trust. It's called what? It's called trust. You're doing business with people. You're supposed to deliver their product on Monday by 6 p.m. And you couldn't make it. It is 4 p.m. You're coming. 4 p.m. is coming. And you just give them a phone call. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I couldn't. I won't be able to it by 6 p.m. Can you give me like the next two hours of the, the person has been waiting for her, has been waiting for him, and it was at 7 he called and said, I won't be able to make it. That shows that you are not sucks. You, you are not building the real trait uh, qualities that it takes to run a business or an organization. I'm not able to make it. This is the reason why you're on time talking to people. Why? Because they are waiting for you. They are using the time their energy maybe they had another function they ought to go they have they suspended the function and they're still waiting for you and then you call them one hour and said i'm not coming he said something about your knowing to you people don't know that it has you have you have just flagged the wrong flag whoosh you just brought it out like that I have one of my partners, he's a very busy man, businessman. And if he's not going to be in an in a online church, you just said, Pastor, I'm going to be around. He, by, by Friday, he has started talking to me. I'm going to be around. This is my schedule. If I come in, I will just stay for 20 minutes and I'll be out because I have a meeting. What do you Trust, accountability. When people discover that they, they can lead, call what? Trust. Is it possible that somebody can be in a place where there is so much resources but they're still in lack? Yes. Because they can't trust them. They can't. Have you had somebody say, don't you trust me? Don't you trust me? No, you don't need to say that. You say that. If you can be trusted. You don't, you need, you don't, you don't you trust me? Eh? Trust me now. Don't you trust me? Trust me. Don't you trust No. You don't need to say, don't you trust me? You should have trust. Refer in your action. You don't have to say that. You don't have to say, trust me. No. That they walk with you, they find it. That there is trust here. There is what? There is trust. I said that trust is not a gift. Trust is something you cultivate. And that is what takes you to the top. Because once you're being trusted, people begin to remove their boundaries for you. Because people have boundaries. Maybe they said, I can never do something like this for people from here or for this kind of people. But you just came into their life and they noticed that you can be trust. Why are most people succeeding early in life? Trust. A few months ago, is it last year? I should let me get this story. Uh, this is a life experience, not a story. A story is something that you maybe fabricate and created. Uh, but it's a life experience. A man came to a bank, I think one of the banks in Nigeria here, and he made a of ten, I think ten thousand dollars. Ten thousand dollars. And somehow the money he forgot the money somewhere within the bank there, and he left. A security man picked up the ten thousand dollars and start looking for the owner. $10,000, 3.8 million naira and some fraction at the rate at when that guy picked that money. <laughs> Was looking for the owner and finally the owner came back to the bank and they gave him the money. You know what happened with that boy? He became rich. The bank itself had a program A nationwide program to dollars. I was watching the program myself. He returned ten thousand dollars, but before that, people were coming. I want to give him five thousand dollars, twenty thousand dollars. All kinds of partners of that bank. They said this is the true picture of Nigerians. Wow. 
he returned ten thousand dollars. Some people will see the money and say, What the Lord have done for me? Church people. Oh man, not tell me that, you know. Now God do collect it. They have one seen dollar before they open it. Man, dollar one after the other. No, now. He returned the money. Trust was built. There was a security man, but he cannot be there anymore. They have moved him. He was opportune to see in his life time, statesman, that no matter how he do that security, he won't meet with them. But trust brought him to the platform, not gifts. High five somebody if you got one neighbor by your side. High five me somebody. High five me somebody. High five me somebody. Look for somebody and give him a high five. Tell him, tell him it is trust. Not gift. Brought them there. It was trust. What do you think that brought Joseph to the front line? Potiphar. But trusted him. That was why when the wife lied that Joseph slept with her sexually, knowing you, without him hearing the whole story. That was why he put him in the prison. He put him in prison because he felt trust was breach. But it was not a breach of trust, it was betrayal trying to breach trust. Wow. That was why he took him to prison. He was angry. When the wife gave him that information, he never verified the information. He never changed because he trusted him. When you're trusted, be very, very careful. Trust is not easily rebuilt when broken. You can be forgiven, doesn't mean you have been trusted. Wow. Did you hear what I said? Today's service is for lifetime runners. Those who want to do something with their life are people I'm talking to. I'm talking with people I want to, that want to do something with their life. Because in trust, you get more than in gift. In trust, you get more trust you get more than in gift someone was trying to someone that is that is close to me they relate with me and their dad has a business abroad that they are shipping of cars into countries the man have not seen me because this the the, the son-in-law and the daughter-in-law have told him and so much about me he said why not Apostle Faith Man be our link man for we to bring in exporting some things into their country? Just that I never think about that. Is you know what people are looking for? Huh? You know what it means? A hundred cars came in for you to clear. But God wasn't leading me there. So I didn't make myself available. He said, why not tell Apostle Faith Man whether he can be able to help us? What are they banking on? Trust. That's what they, they have not met me. Person, but there, no, no, you can trust them. People should not trust you because they saw you. People should trust you from afar. By seeing your fruit, oh, but trust that guy. I trust that guy. You know why? This is what makes you rise in life. You want to be an early riser? You want to release the greatness in you? Then develop trust. How do you develop trust? Number one, the ability to keep to your word. That's one. I want to teach you this. If you say something to someone and are not able to keep at it, please try to reach out to them and say, I was not able to keep it. I was not able to do it. Am I, getting, am I making myself clear? You know what you're doing? You're causing the person's heart rest 
When you're sick, so you're not able to keep to that promise, you call the person. Or you meet the person and say, well, I, I told you I was going to do this, but look at the situation behind me right now. I'm not able to deliver. Please, can you just give me some a few more weeks or a few more days or a few more hours, whatever the, 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 the issue may be, let's, let's resolve it. That makes the heart of the people to rest. You're somebody, you're, you're owing somebody or somebody's owing you and then you're calling the person and he's not picking his call. What is he saying to you? You are sending the wrong message. If someone that you're owing start calling you for their money, pick the call. I said what? Pick the call and say, I'm so sorry. Maybe if you have given them a date, I'm supposed to give Take the call. Uh, give the call. Let them know it can be possible tomorrow. This is the reason why, you know what you're doing? You're keeping trust. You're, you're saving your trust. You're protecting your trust. You're, that way, you, you're causing their hearts to rest. Not that thoughts they come, they call and call and call. Then he said, am I the only person that is owing? Don't say that. Don't say that. That's not the right thing to say. Because when you collected the goods, or when the service was given to you, eh? when the service was rendered to you, well, you, you, that was not how it started. Do you know that so many people have gone ahead and closed off other people? Huh? There are people that are very genuine right now. They are genuine. They are, they are able to pay. But they went to ask for help. The person said no. What business? You have not done business with him before. The last person. Do, do you see what happened? That simply means my attitude can close door for people that are coming behind me. And this is why we need to work hard to keep our repo. Why did why the Jonathan? Why did Jonathan... Everything that was going on in the palace, Jonathan would say to David. Because he knew that the kingdom has shifted. Because he knew that David was a trustworthy man. He, he, David wanted about David the ability to keep his word. David was not just a man after God's own heart because he was singing praise and worship. He has the ability to keep his word. What he told Jonathan he would do, he did. He is anyone remember trust trust people a, a, a close friend of yours was dying in the hospital bed and look at you and say take care of my children take care of them help them support them he told you I have this time I kept somewhere I didn't tell my wife because of the way she uses the money can you use this 10 million dollar to help support he gave that only for the man to die. To just sleep on and go home. You know, the friend that valued a 10 million to himself. What a betrayal. What a betrayal. There are those who are dead, but their words have been betrayed. What an offense. No offense that is greater than that offense. When someone is on his dying bed, give you a word, give you some things. And then you're supposed to deliver, and you never delivered. Wow. Wow. That's more than wickedness. That's more than wickedness. So, what am I trying to say today? That trust is important. Can someone say trust is important? Let's look at Proverbs chapter 9. In Proverbs chapter 9, I'd like us to look at verse Verse 8. Reprove not a scorner. Lest he hate thee. Rebuke a wise man. He will love thee. Who is going to love you? Huh? He said reprove not a scorner. Lest he hate thee. Rebuke a wise man. So who is qualified for rebuke? You have to be wise to qualify. Who is wise? If you rebuke a corner, it's going to hurt. Have you ever corrected some people before and they frown at you? And they stop greeting you. They stop relating with you. you know why they do that? Because for them, instruction is an offense. 
Huh? What is an offense? Instruction. But look at trust. We're going to look at, uh, the next thing I would like us to look at is focus. Focus. If you're going to release the greatness in you, focus. How are you known as a focused person? Somebody can look at it and say, this guy has focus. There are people that don't have focus. I'm telling you, they don't have focus. Today they will come and tell you this. Next morning they will say this. They are not focused. Focus has to do with stability. I said what? Focus has to do with what? With stability. If you're truly focused, you'll be stable. I said, if you're truly focused, you're going to be what? You're going to be stable. Focus has to do with stability. Focus. Watch a focused man, he will get to his destination. Focus. God asks you to do something, you stay with it. Whether it's one years, for five years, offense came. Let me tell you this. Offense will come. Reasons that will pull you out of your faith will come. Let me make it clear to you. I'm not here to just tell you, oh, offense will not come. My brother, offense will come. If you come to this church, offense will come. There are people that may say something here, I don't like it. Does it mean that you should just jump out of the window? No. Offense will come. Offense will come. And if you can't deal with offense, you can't come into increase. Offense will come. Who tell you offense will not come? Offense will come. The ministry of Jesus offense. Read your Bible. That's why I used to tell people, read, read the Bible. A lot of people are not reading the Bible. That is why they are acting differently from the word of God. Offense will come. Huh? About you. Somebody will do say something. You know, one time, somebody had a child many years ago. And we we'll talked on the phone, we prayed for them, had successful delivery. Two hours later, went and told her something about me somehow. And the person coming on the phone was so angry with me. Oh, pastor, I've done. You have not come. You have not come. Hey, damn. God will just. You know what? Just talking all kinds of rubbish. Let me say this to you. My job is to pastor. Huh? To teach you. To equip you. That's what the vision said. Didn't see me in your house. Doesn't mean I don't love you. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying right now? Another brethren can come to visit you. To minister. To, I can't be everywhere. Can I, am I making myself clear? No, oh, pastor did not come. Pastor did not come. This pastor said, he doesn't like to come to people's house. This pastor said, he does not like to visit. Now, some people you visit and I say, ah, pastor, I've come. I don't have offering to give him. No, no. I'm looking at the, all, the, all the edge. I'm telling you, could you? Eh? Oh, the way he's coming, I don't like it. You know, the way he's... I used to work a lot oh, before. I used to visit a lot. Then I begin to understand that I should dedicate some of the visit to the brethren. Can I hear a better amen? So that you're coming to this church and I've not come to your house doesn't mean I don't love you. Is somebody here one say, Praise the Lord. And the person was speaking with so much anger, with so much bitterness. I said, That can't solve your problem. No, no. Jesus said, Heal the sick. If somebody is sick and you're a brethren, you're close to the person, what are you supposed to do? You minister to the person. The pastor mustn't come to the place and sit. No. You minister. That's why we're believers. We're, we're to lay hands on people, pray for people, stand with people. If the pastor is everywhere, there is something wrong with that pastor. I'm telling you, there is something wrong with that pastor. If a pastor is everywhere, huh? I can't be everywhere in this church. My job, like, I'm believing God to go on vacation this month to take some rest, you know, to take some break. My job in this church is to just share the word of God, preach the word of God. There are other people who do other things. I can't do everything. I can't promise that. Word. No, I cannot. Not even if you give me money. You know why? Because I was not wired like that. You know your job. yourself. In the name of Jesus, I speak healing to this body. I speak life. 
Maybe there's a problem going on and God may say, I want you to go see this person. Stand with him in prayer and pray for the person. It's a different situation. You get someone saying, but you must learn to believe God for your healing. You must learn to stand on the word of God. Oh, I'm angry. Nobody visited me. Nobody looked for me. No! You can't grow that way. You must learn to be responsible for your faith. You must, that's why we have a lot of baby Christians everywhere. Because a lot of them are always looking for who will pray for them, who will stand. At a particular time, you start, at a particular point, you start praying for yourself. You start standing, you start growing. You start speaking the word of God over your life. You start taking charge. That's growth. You cannot always be babysitting. They cannot always uh, carry you all the time. Carry, I didn't see uh, yesterday. A great man of God in this country said something. He said, there are two sisters that were coming to their church many years ago. If he, if, he, if he doesn't follow them up, they will not come. If they didn't follow them up, they will come. If I call his name, all of you know him. And he decided that he was not going to go to their house again. If they want to come to church, you should come to church. Because serving God should be your decision. How many of you here, your boss come and follow you up to come to office? You're collecting salary. You run and go, especially if you have a queer boss. 720, you call 725. He said, get ready for query. You'll be running all the time now. Eh? But when it comes to church, people just feel like, the pastor is not doing this. The pastor is not doing that. Don't you have an idea that the pastor is a human being? He needs to, he needs to, he needs to rest. He needs to take care of himself. He has a family. So you need to begin to understand that your faith, when you come to church and receive the word of God, you're also expected to grow as you can help others to grow. You can help us to grow. You can help others to stand in their work with God. You can help others to develop. That's growth. And it takes focus on the word to grow spiritually. It takes focus on the word to grow spiritually. So focus is very important when it comes to releasing the greatness in you. Are you a focused person? Are you someone look at you and said, this woman is focused. This guy is focused. Because if you're not focused, you can make progress. Your progress is in focus. Being able to do one thing for a long period of time is a mark of strength. Being a long period of time is what? It's a mark of strength. You stay focused. This is where I'm supposed to be. I'm going to be here. Somebody came and knocked your head. I will stay here. I don't care how many times you knock my head. I will stay Somebody came and said something, I will stay. Why? Because this is where you choose to stay. The ministry of Jesus have imperfect people. If your pastor, the kind of church that Jesus pastored, Thomas the Didymus should be one of your leaders. Judas should be one of your money people. Huh? Call somebody. Peter will say something. He will deny you. He will also bring that knife out. What kind of people you have inside church? Huh? Look at an apostle. He brought that knife. Before Marcus would say, Jack, his ear was down. Wait a second. Well, a big kind of knife. <laughs> and Jesus, <laughs> and Jesus speaking, said, no, 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 no. Peter, that's not the way. That's not the way. That's not the way. He, good master, loving master. But he had an apostle who used to know how to use knife. What's wrong with you guys? What with guy here? Drop it on the floor. Even the people that came, everybody went back. Apostles can be that powerful. They have knives. <laughs> <laughs> they have not <laughs> and he pick up his ear Jesus just does that it and don't fix the back oh my god no surgery he just fix his back Bab, think just in case when the gospel will come the guy will hear with his ear just fix his ear back for him and then Peter put your knife back he said, hey, hey, hey. just look at them he took and fight <laughs> hallelujah but, but that was not the strategy but he had a kind of person in his leadership. Oh, pastor, this person that is leading with is a bad person. Yes. Where will listen to bad people? This is actually a day. What are you talking about? Look at the ministry of Jesus. They have somebody who betrayed. He came. He said, he came and kissed him. He kissed him. Read the Bible. Is it not in the Bible? Read your Bible. And you know, sometimes when we preach from the Bible, people are wondering, is it in the Bible? Yes. Judas came and kissed him. Because the people could know, know who is this guy. Because they almost look alike. He kissed him. He said, you kiss me like a friend. But you're not. He dropped it for him. No, he didn't have the power to say, no. He had the power. But focus and finish it. 
There's an assignment. The assignment is the cross. And get it, whatever that will make you get to that cross, make sure you get to that cross. Because the betrayal is leading to the cross. The reason for the betrayal is to get to the cross. Do you know that Jesus could have said, I'm not going to die for anybody. And where will you be this morning? This one, he died. People are defecting. Eh? <laughs> Imagine Jesus did not die. How your life will look like. How your dream will look like. Imagine that he did not die. He died that you will have life. Focus is important if you're going to do anything big. Focus. How focused are you is the question. Are you willing to stay with something until that thing happens? Are you willing? Because most things you're looking for won't just drop until you maintain focus. I was watching a documentary on one of the players that uh, played the World Cup. The young man, I think he was 17 years old, that uh, like played for France. And they said when he was 14, he got all the pictures of his idol and pasted on his room. He said, this is where I'm going to be. This is where I'm going to. He was, you know, I, I was telling my wife, he said, that was a spiritual principle. That was, his, that was a very powerful principle. He kept the pictures. He kept the pictures. He was dreaming it. He was seeing himself. He was moving his body. He was working on it. There has to be a picture for there to be a manifestation. And how focused are you on your picture? When God gave Joseph a picture, the guy focused on the picture. Focus. Focus is the ability to stay in good times and in bad times. You're moving in the same direction. You're moving. You started a business. And maybe two years later, you're not seeing much fruit. Oh, I'm tired. You can't just be giving up like that. You can't be quitting all the time. Anytime you run into a position, you want to give up. That's not a real guy. You can't always quit because you bump into storm. Storms are real. Whether it's in marriage, it's in business, that your marriage is having a shaking doesn't mean divorce. It may mean learn to submit yourself. Hallelujah. To marry for a long time is a decision. Whether you like it or not, if you want to marry for a long time, huh, it's a decision. You don't marry for a long time because the person sells all the right thing to you. Sometimes they can say something to you that your flesh is it. You want to... Oh God, God, it's because I'm born again, no. Your body, you want to react. And sometimes the best way that can correct you is your spouse. And the people who don't like to take cancer from it are our spouse. <laughs> yes, because they will say, they know you, and they say, see you, see what you want to do. But watch this very well. Eh, why will you tell me that? The Spirit of God is leading me. Even when the Spirit is leading you, you'll be listening to whether He will lead you with the right cancer. So it takes decision to marry for a long time. It takes focus because you wake up with this, in the house with this woman every day. Every day you wake up with a ah, pastor. A young man got married and he came to his pastor, said he's changing his mind. Pastor said, You can't change your mind. It's too early. You will stay. He said, Pastor, I don't like her anymore. You don't marry based on like. You marry based on decision. Marriage is not like. People's body will change. People's body. Anytime you want to engage people, you want to marry, look at their body in the next 20 years. It helps you think well. It's not just something you do once in a while. It's, you've come into it. It's a, it's a lifetime adventure. It's more, it's more than what you see because this body will change. Yes. And when it changes, will you change with it? You can't be running after fresh bodies. Ah, this one is like this. This one is like this. This one is like this. You get into so many troubles. You get into so many troubles. There is so much price to pay for distraction. There is so much price to pay for distraction. Whenever you are distracted, you are on your way to pain. If you don't handle that distraction with care, focus. 
Focus. Focus. Focus. It takes focus to do anything big. I'm telling you. You can't do big things in a hurry. Take it from me. I said what? You cannot do big things in a hurry. You can't do anything great in a hurry. You know why? It takes time to have the right foundation. It takes time to have the right foundation. That was why I told you that trust is greater than gifts. I told you that. If you're gifted and you cannot be trusted, you have a problem. Because there are so many gifted people without direction. But you cannot see someone that have developed the capacity to be trusted. That's why I told you, you become rich if you can be trusted. There are people that will just give you money. Looking at you, I said, this guy can be trusted. Just, just help him, help him, help him. He can be trusted. He can be trusted. So focus is so important. Let's go to that scripture again in, in Proverbs chapter 9. In Proverbs chapter 9 verse 9, it said, give instruction to a wise man. Give what? Instruction to who? To a wise man. Proverbs chapter 9, verse 9. It, it said, give instruction to a wise man. And he will, he will be yet wiser. Teach a just man. He will increase in learning. Give an instruction. Not to a fool. To a wise man. Who is a wise man? A person with the ability to learn. Who is a wise man? A person who is willing to receive instruction. Because you grow by instruction. See, a lot of people are not ahead in life because they are smarter than you. They are ahead because they listen to someone. That's just different. Some people are not ahead, maybe in business, and they are running mega businesses, mega corporations. It's not based on their age. They listen. They listen. And somebody was saying something. Okay, hi, I did this, I did this, I did that. Okay, 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 okay. That's good. That, is that what you did? Is that what you did? Okay, okay, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. Because instruction will preserve your dreams. What preserves your dreams are instructions. When you see someone running from instruction, you just saw someone who is running into destruction. Someone go, hex, instruction. Don't, don't tell me, don't tell me, don't tell me. Don't tell me, I don't want to hear it. What you need to hear is instruction. This is one of the ways you release your greatness. Is to hear instruction. What will instruction do for you? Instruction will strengthen focus. Many years ago, my pastor told me to go and listen to two people. And he said something about them. One was a very old man. The man was so old. He's, the man has passed off for more than 50 years now. He said, I should go and listen to the man. You know when your pastor is not telling you who to go and listen to? That's a, a serious assignment. He said, go listen to him. The man's name is called Bob Knuckles. He said, go listen to Bob Knuckles. Bob Knuckles have some things to share with him. And then I went to listen to Bob Knuckles. And I saw how you can be great. And at the same time, you're relaxed. One less, lesson number one. Lesson number two. I saw that perseverance is not a gift. It's something you develop. Hmm? Lesson number three. I saw someone who is not trying to show up. Trying to flash himself. You get what I'm saying right now? Lesson number four. I saw someone who is getting old. In age, but he was strong in wisdom. I was learning that because one of the ways you rise in life is to listen. I'm telling you, if you love your life, listen. If you love your life, just listen. If you can listen, you will recover the lost years. If you can listen, you can adjust on time. I'm telling you. I'm telling you, if you can listen, you can make progress on time. Because by listening, you know what not to do. Hmm. By listening, you know what the expectations are. By listening, you're listening. You're listening. Why do people have coach? Why? Why? 
Do people have coach? I'm trying to remember the years. I think Nigeria was playing with Italy. Trying to remember. Yes. Nigeria was playing with Italy. And everybody were already leading them. What are they winning them? We're happy. I was happy myself. <laughs> and then the Italian coach left his seat where he was sitting. And came close to the touch line and said, but he called the name and said, he did like this. And then he went back, we had to go. The coach represents influence. As he watched him, he, he, he called his name in the pitch and he did like this. That was how Nigeria was out of that tournament. That's what they call listening. You listen. When you listen, you win. How do you win? By listening. I will fly to anywhere to listen. Anywhere they say there is something to listen to. Ah! Forget you. I, I, my mom, I will bring and give them. Be saying it, let me be hearing it. Let me be taking my notes. Because this life, you go far by what? By listening. I will listen. Why won't I listen? You will listen for experience. You will listen for the, the mistake the man made 10 years ago, 20 years ago. By listening to him, you're going to avoid all of those mistakes. Oh, the reason why you listen is for you not to repeat their mistakes. Imagine someone who come under me as an apprentice to learn about ministry, to learn about... There are things I will share with him. I will say, stay out of this, stay out of this, focus on this finish. His mate are struggling with many things, but I've just positioned him. By, just by 30 minutes conversation, the young man of the young man is positioned. And watch him out in the next five years, he's going to rise. Why? Because he, by, by relationship, he had an opportunity to have instruction. For you to release the greatness in you, instruction is strategic. Instruction. Why do you need instruction? A man was wondering, Billy Graham many years ago, whenever he goes to a meeting, he takes time to rest a lot. So somebody was wondering, ah, why would, would he always take time to rest, to maybe spend long time, just be by himself alone? Ah, was wondering. Then they asked him a question, why do you do that? And I want to hear answers. Why are you resting that long hours? He has a meeting the night, so he's not bothering for anything, just resting. That time of rest is time to receive inspiration. Rest is not just for purpose of resting. You are resting to gain understanding. You are resting to gain. There are some ideas you won't get in the crowd. There are ideas you won't get by people being around you making noise. But there are things you will come into once you start resting. Relaxing your body and then you keep a pen by the side. Ideas are coming. What it takes to be a billionaire is not far from you. It's just an insight. It's just what? An insight. And that insight come and that you stay focused on that insight. Because focus is very strategic for where you're going to. Because if you're not focused, you can't build anything big. Focus. And that focus comes with instruction. And let me say this to you. Let's go to Matthew chapter 5, uh, 25 and, and I, will, I will read some things to you. Matthew 25. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Why do I need instruction? I need instruction as I can be effective. Glory be to God. In Matthew chapter 25 verse 14. For the kingdom of heaven is as a man, as, is as a man traveling into a far country who called his own servants and delivered unto them his goods. Verse 15, Matthew 25 15 now. And unto one he gave five talents. Unto one he gave what? five talents. To another, he gave two. To another, he gave what? One. According, he said, to every man, according to his several ability, and straight away, he took his journey. There was a man who had what? Five talents. There was someone who had what? Two talents. There was someone who had what? One talent. It, the problem is not in the number of the talents. The issue is whether you have an understanding to utilize what you have. 
The man that had five talents went to work. Went to what? He went to work. Look at look at verse. Look at verse 17. And sorry, verse 16 said, Then he that have received five talents went and threaded. Went and did what? And threaded. That word thread means labor. It means laboring. Another word for it. It means minister. <laughs> it means commit. I like to take it again. The word thread there means labor. He started laboring. He, he labored with what he has received. You know, a lot of people like success story, but they are never part of success journey. They like success story. Tell me how, uh, I like how that guy is succeeding. I like how that woman is succeeding. No, don't just go for the story. Try to learn the principles that led to the story. The man who received five, threaded. He ministered. He was laboring with it. In good times, in bad times, and the word for it was walk. He walked it. He started walking with that five talents. He was focused. A lot of people easily get distracted. When somebody's doing something and the one they're doing is not working, oh, look at God. What is happening? Why is he not working? Now, knowing to them that it takes patience to build great things. Patience. It takes patience. And if you don't have patience, you won't go very far. I don't care how gifted you are. You mix things up. Because in, in Hebrews chapter 10, if you read from verse 35 to 36, in line there, he said to us, he said, after you have done the will of God, he said, you have a need of patience. It takes patience to stay focused. Powerful. It takes patience. You're not desperate and start opening door for all kinds of strange spirits. Huh? Oh, this man will see for you. Oh, this person will see for you. You know the best person that will see for you? See from your Bible. You can't tell the spirit that is in oppression. You know, people don't care. What people care about is how to solve their problem. Don't solve your problem at the expense of your future. Don't forget this, I told you. Don't ever solve any problem at the expense of your future. Don't mortgage your future for your immediate need. Don't do that. That's not important. How can you ruin your future because of you're going through some challenges right now? Some financial challenges right now? Or maybe things are not working well. You need to stay focused. You start building. And their lifestyle I'm living that is taking the money out. So much money, money out. Maybe you're into a cohort. You can say to yourself, man, I'm not going to spend so much on this area of my life. I can save that money. Huh? You consider the health implication. Huh? You, you check out yourself and say, no, I'm not going to spend on this. I'm not going to buy this kind of clothes. I'm not going to buy. See, you, you can actually restructure your life for where you want it to go to. It's your choice. You can restructure your life for where you want it to go. A lot of people want a great change, but at the same time, they are buying things they don't need. I was talking to somebody, I said, it's not sure you need now. He asked me what you need now. I said, you need to read books. That's what you need to read now. Don't tell me shoe. Don't tell me shit. Don't tell me I don't want to hear it. For you, I'm talking to the better. better. said for you, don't tell me shoe. Don't tell me shit. Why? You need to develop your mental capacity for your journey. You are not yet developed. You are, what are you looking for shoe for? What shoe? Many years ago, as I go and preach, people will say, Pastor, take this money. Maybe it's 5,000. Maybe it's 10,000. Whatever the money may be. I will stop by a bookshop and divide that money either into two or 60% of that money going to books. I'll buy the books and come back with them. We'll have more books than more clothes in wardrobe. We'll have more books than more shoes in our house. How can your wardrobe be more expensive than your, than your library? It's a sign of something is going wrong. Because you need to read for where you're going. I'm telling you. You need to read. There are people that have instructions for you. There are things they say to you. The elderly man who used to run that bookshop. One day saw me. The man is late now. He looked at me, his name is, we used to call him Ogobasi. He looked at me and said, young man, now is the time you're working the miracles. I refuse to buy things that won't add to my life at that season. I don't need it. 
If you are building your vision, there are things that should not be a focus for you. What should be your focus are things that will add to you. Look for things that will make you move forward, grow, move on. You have two shoes now, right now. It's not bad deal. You're managing some today. Tomorrow you manage the next one. You're working on the vision. You're working on the dreams. You know where you're going to. Now, 10 years from today, you won't stand as a beggar. Now, five years from today, you won't be struggling at the same point. Why? Because you have made right choices. Making right choices. Waking up to make right choices. Making choices that will, you be, say, let me say this to you. It's not good somebody's old and is not happy with his life. I don't like that kind of life. I don't like it that somebody's 70 years old. And if your children don't give to you, don't eat. No, 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 no. Let's cancel it. Eh? All the young people listening to me, don't, work, don't live like that. Eh? Work for your money. Can I hear a better amen? That when you are 70, whether they give or they don't give or you're comfortable with yourself. I'm talking to somewhere right now. Then you will just be cursing your children. Eh, you, you and your wife will be eating. I'm seeing two of you, you're eating. You don't care. You don't know whether they have the money. You don't know whether they have. You don't know because all you're thinking about is yourself. Because when you ought to walk your dream, you never walk your dream. And now you're moving the responsibility to your children. A good parent leaves an inheritance. I told my dad that two weeks ago. When in a conversation and he said something, said, Dad, listen. Leaving an inheritance was what you didn't do much. We're talking. We talk like friends. Because he was angry at what most of my sibling was doing to him. I said, listen. Let's take it the way we've seen it. But you ought to have left inheritance. That's what the scripture teach. I like to be frank on matters. I like to say it the way the word of God said it. You leave an inheritance. So, and you didn't leave an inheritance. You want to leave a body? You get what I'm saying right now? So, we're leaving an inheritance. Now, our parent generation may have made a mistake. Now, I'm preaching to every young person watching me all over the world right now. Wherever you're watching me from, from Malaysia, from England, from Brazil, from Argentina. Wherever you're watching this broadcast right now. Listen, don't raise your children to be a bailout point. Raise them to freedom. Did you get my wisdom? You heard what I said? Huh? You know why? That's way you'll be at peace. And that's where the and wise children will always come back. They will always bring things. I'm just telling to tell, let you know. But you have already built your life to a point that you can say, Ah, my grandson is having a wedding. Uh, John, which day is your wedding day? On June 6th. Okay. Uh, me, I'm coming home. And then you came with a check of over a million pounds. Do you notice that the rich keep being rich? Have you noticed that the poor don't like marrying the, the rich don't like marrying? No, no. Oh, you want me to tell you the detail? Yes. The rich is in a rare case where you will see a rich marrying somebody they don't know their identity. Before they get the way they will be shouting. Who is this person? We don't know her. Best my friend. That's why you have that kind of reaction because for them it's the rich to the rich. And this is why it's good to be blessed as you can have your choice. Church, are you hearing what I'm saying right now? Eh? It's good to be blessed as you can have your choice. That nobody sees you as a liability. That whoever that meets with you is meeting with an asset. That's how to raise your life. You owe that to yourself. You owe yourself being an asset. That this man that wants to marry you, ha, let him thank God that you said yes. I'm not talking to somebody right now. Let the man thank God. The man should be able to go to God and say, God, hey, God, you have given me a miracle. A miracle has happened. But cause first, you are an asset to yourself. You are not a liability to yourself. You can make your own money. You can grow things by yourself. You can build things by yourself. But when you can build things by yourself, when you can grow things by yourself, you are at the mercies of others. It happens to male, it happens to female. It's on the both end. But so what do I do, pastor? Making right choices. Maybe you see your life where your life is right now. You need to say to yourself, man, there are things I don't want to do for the next one year. I need to improve on this area. 
telling you, you're telling yourself, I need to improve on this area. I need to work on this area. I need to work on the other area. I need to develop this and that. You're working your way. You are focused. You have a target. You know where you're going to. That you're not going to be a liability to nobody. People will not like to hear your story for a long time. Uh, you know, I came from this place. You know, my father is poor. They, they, they may tolerate it for some time. After a while, they will, they, will, they will front it up. They will tell you, I'm telling you. I'm telling you what folks can do to you. They, they will not like to be hearing it all the time. They want to hear, like my pastor will say, Apostle, what is happening? <laughs> What? Because they want to hear a progress report that at least I prayed for you. What did they do you now? <laughs> make you make you achieve some things. You get what I'm saying? They're they expecting results. At least there are some fruit to show for somebody here now. It may be that you need to redefine your life. Maybe the kind of friends you keep. Maybe the, all these guys you keep around you, how are they helping you to grow mentally? How are they helping you to grow in your business life? How are they helping you to grow in your spiritual life? You're, you're looking at them. This one is not adding to me. This is not adding to me. So why am I relating with them? You begin to use that time for things that will help you get better. Let me say this to you. Time is one thing when you're losing it, you don't know it. Have you noticed that when August, eh? this month is like a gate month. It's a gate month between the end of this year and the beginning of this year. And so what do I do? What do I do? Who is a lazy man? A lazy man is not just somebody who doesn't have a job. A lazy man can be also be likened as a man who has a job, but that job is not the job of his dream. So you complain about it every day. His what? He's lazy. A lazy man also can be seen as a man who don't believe in himself. I'm defining lazy for you right now because the society have a different vision about it. A lazy man is somebody who don't believe in himself. I cannot even do it. I cannot even do it. I don't even have the resources. You're always talking like that. I cannot even do it. I don't have the resources. No, no, don't be talking like that. That's not the way to talk. I can do it. I can do all things through Christ that do what? That strengthen me. You talk like that to yourself because how you talk to yourself matters a lot. You can't be saying, look at my life. Look at my life. See, regrets are choice. I can choose to neglect my regrets and pursue my vision with passion. Yeah, I can choose to say, I'm not going to regret of all the mistakes I've made. I'm going to pursue my vision with passion because regret depletes energy. One thing that depletes your energy is when you sit down to regret. I have a, a very awkward beginning when I was, you know, I told the people the story. Life was very tough for us in our family. Really, really tough. Tell you the truth. Tell it truth. Life was tough. I left primary school. My parents didn't have money to take me to secondary school for two years and three months. So when somebody wants to tell me a story, I say, I want to hear my own. I have crazy rough beginning. I used to sell ice water. You call it pure water now. Buy ice water. Carrying it. Yes. I'm watching. And the ice water is in bottles. Yes. Carrying it. I was selling it. And I was doing it. Go look for wood for your mother to cook. Then you see other children going to school. One of my pastors used to say something to me. One of my senior pastors he said, It is early to know who is ahead. Your parents can give you best education and you don't have a best life. Because best life is a choice. It's not the school you went to. You can decide to be useful or you can decide to be useless. It's a choice. Then I got an admission to a school. The school has no fence. Permission to go home anytime I want to go home. I sit in the class. <laughs> Everything was against me. <laughs> you know that kind of school? Where well, you don't have a fence. So you can not come out from your class. Where is the road to the house? Be going. No thanks. It means close yourself. Anything I want to close, close. It came by 8, you want to close by 9.30. Be going. They asked you for a say our teachers didn't come. But I made a decision to sit down. Because I've looked at where I'm coming from. If I don't sit down, I was going to have a worse life. Because your foundation is not good enough 
to take you to the top. So now you have to rebuild the foundation. There are many of you here, you have to start rebuilding foundations. You know why? If you don't, you won't go nowhere. Watch my lips. If you don't, you won't go nowhere. I have to start rebuilding the foundation. To start rebuilding the foundation. Put all my books together, they will buy all the cars we have. And the books are still remaining. All buy. The investment was to know. To know something. To know something. I don't mind how the food was. I will eat it, but I want to know something. And if I know something, I will eat better food. And I will eat in better places. People will open the door for me by themselves. Yes, like that. that's what happened now. When you begin to work on your dream, work on yourself, you develop. There, there are so many of us that God is saying, you need to give more time to reading, to developing. Someone say, Pastor, but you know, I've, I've gone through so many challenges. Challenges are real to life. I said, challenges are real to life. There are people that their business has collapsed more than 10 times, they rise again. Because they choose to. It collapsed. They started again, it collapsed. They started again, it collapsed. They came, it, it's falling. But they said to themselves, I will succeed. I will. Now, decision, no? I will. If you're looking at your background story, looking at the mistakes you're making, and let me say this to you put your mistakes behind. In this service, if you have a mistake, you have a regret, put your mistakes behind you. Pastor I lost money 10 years ago. Put the it. mistakes behind you and start living. You cannot create a future from a loss, you create a future from strength. Don't create the future from a loss. You, you, I remember this mistake you made. We have made mistake as a church. We bought a property somewhere. We lost everything. All the money was gone. A friend I had, he said, for, oh, if it was me that nothing happened, I would just stop ministry. He told me, face to face. A woman offered us a place not as big as this place. Maybe half of, from this wall to this place. And a part of it was a cement. They put cement on the place. And it, it opens. No generator will use lantern. I was preaching. This same message doesn't change. I was preaching. I was preaching. I was teaching. I was moving. We come for service. We on the lantern. God now promoted us. We bought a gas lamp. You don't know gas lamp. Hey, don't, do, don't do me like that this morning. <laughs> we, we, we bought a gas lamp. And we are so. The day we bought it there. Eh? The place will bright up well. The place will bright up well. And there are people that say that. What is this? Gas lamp. Don't keep company with people who spite your progress. See, anybody. Listen to me. See, anybody who has the potential to spite your progress. Eh? Maybe you bought a fairly used shirt or a fairly used thing. And I said, ah, I thought, where is the packet? Those kind of people, mark them. Anyone who is a true friend will notice that God has helped you with lantern. That is shining brighter. We're happy. We're happy. After many years, we started saving money to buy generator. Saving, saving. They will bought one generator like that. But you know you're going, you're growing through process. Why am I teaching this? Focus. Focus. When the water gets hot, wait a little. It won't kill you. It won't kill you. It gets hot. It's, it's hot everywhere. It's like this place, hell is breaking loose. Here, yeah, hell is breaking. You stay. You stay. Face it. Deal with it. Don't be a kind of person that people know you for running all the time. When things just happen, opposition, let's say you pack your bag, you're, you're run. And you come to another place, opposition, come, you pack your bag. You can't be packing your bag like that. Face it. You're walking on the road, say, hey, look at him, look at him. He has failed, look at him. Look at that man, I'm telling you now. He's not going anywhere. You heard it, but you're still moving. Moving. You're still moving. You're still moving. You're still moving. 
Your pastor is going to say, no, no, you don't know. It's not going anywhere. It's not going anywhere. Not going anywhere. Your pastor, you move it. Once you start breaking forth, those same people will be there to say, did you notice? Imagine you give up. Learn to focus on what is important. Stop putting your energy on things that drown you. Stop putting your energy on trying to please everybody. You can't please everybody. Everybody will not be pleased by your life. The early you know it, the better for you. Your focus should be to do the will of God. If anyone is pleased by that, we thank God. They are not pleased. We praise God. But we'll continue doing what we're called to do. Want to be in the good list of your mother? Want to be in the good list of your father? Your sister? Your friend? Your Everybody wants to be in their good list. You can't be in the good list of everybody. You got to do what is important. As I'm rounding up, listen to this. Focus is what you develop. It's not a gift. You develop focus. Consistency. Consistency. You stay. You stay. Have you seen a team in this World Cup that just ended? They were winning and they said they are not going to play again. If they are giving them 4-2, they are still playing. You play till the match end. You can't stop playing. You can't stop playing. You can't stop. You can't jump out of the pit. Oh, oh maybe they scored them five goals. Then I said, they will still go and pass the ball. Continue with the remaining strength. Five goals has entered their post. And then they score the sixth goal. They will still bring the ball to pass again. What are you learning from that? You're learning perseverance. You're learning finishing. You're learning diligence. Am I, am I, am I helping you today? Am I helping you? You're, you're learning consistency. A lot of people don't have these things. These are the things that make people great. These are the things that make people stand strong when all their mates are, are going down, they are rising because they choose to stay when it was going down. They choose to stand. They choose to stay. You think it was easy for us? When we came here, it wasn't easy. For those who know this church, we know that we used to keep canopy at the front of that place and wind will come and blow it off. Some of you know it. The wind will come and blow it off. What happened next? They will come back and face it again. Church must continue. Why are you stopping? Because the wind came. Wind is normal. Are you giving up on your dream? Giving up on your dream because you came across pressure. Pressure is real. Opposition is real. Temptation is real. Crisis are real. Disappointment is real. Limitations are real. But what makes you tick strong is focus. I want to finish this and I started. A friend of mine had a meeting many years ago. Whether it's for 21 days or for 40 days or 30 days, I can't really remember. And they called me and said, Apostle, I'm tired. <laughs> that means he wanted to stop the meeting halfway. I said, man of God, you will finish at the start. <laughs> Number one, one of the reasons why I must finish is that you have already announced to your church. <laughs> your integrity is at stake. Because it was not a fun. It was a push. I said, no, you have to finish it. You have to. Learning how to finish something. Hmm? That's what we're learning today. Hmm? How to stay with something until you walk. How to watch things. Do you know there is a joy in seeing something work in your hands? Huh? There is a joy in seeing something that was small and then it started growing. There is this confidence you have. You saw it grow. It just grew and grew and grew and grew and grew. Hallelujah. They have this confidence. Those who don't grow things have nothing to say to others. What will you tell them? If somebody come and meet you and say, how do you grow things? What, will you, what have you grown? What will you tell them? You can't tell them much. Because you yourself have not done it. But if you can be able to grow it. I'm here tonight to say to you, you started a business. So there's something that God called you to do. God gave you an instruction. Most things don't work after five years. You want to hear the truth? Most things don't work after ten years. You want to hear the truth? Most things don't work after fifteen years. 
Some ministries break forth after 15 years. Some ministries break forth after 20 years. When you see people run into a place without longevity, without a long period of time, check it well. There are things we don't tell you. But where God is walking, there, he walks on the man. He does what? He walks on the man. Then he walks on what the man is doing. There is a process. But you know, a lot of people don't like that. You know why? Because that makes you look like you're not relevant. You see your friend just break through. This one just break through. Can you do what they do? What some people do, you can't do it. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. What some people do, you can't do it. They say, bring your mother. You know your mother gave back to you. Your lovely mother. I say, you want to go and give it to a shrine. Huh. That's not success. And I see them dying like chicken all over the place. See how they are dying like chickens. Like chickens. How can a pastor know when he's going to die? Because something has entered into it. It may look flourishing before people, but it won't go very far. I'm telling you, people don't... Church, gospel, whatever profession you find yourself, don't mix it. Listen to me very well. Don't mix it. If you mix it, you have stories to tell. It may be sweet at the beginning, but later it will choke. Leave it clean. Leave it pure. Leave it whole. Leave it clean. Maybe the car you're driving right now is not first hand, second hand, is tenth hand. Yes. Be driving it. The day will come, you go to hand eight. Like that, you'll be going gradually until one day to be a chair robber. Can I hear better? Amen. amen. But you have made progress. Huh? As a businessman in these states that owns an oil business doing great work, I know them because of the family who relates, you know, from, you know, and one time when he was building his business, somebody came. These people are believers, so they are not uh, unbelievers, they are believers. And uh, he called him and said, uh, why are you still buying Tokumbo cars? He called his name. Why are you driving Tokumbo cars? Uh, you know what the guy replied him? He said, I'm running the race set before me. I'm running the race set before me. How many of you can boldly tell someone, I'm running the race? Because people like you to compare. People like to compare a lot. So when you hear, he said, I'm running the race set before me. Today, can buy a car of 40 million. It doesn't shake him. Doesn't shake him. Can do anything. Doesn't shake him. Why? Because he has built that business to a point. He can do whatever he wants to do. Yeah. You know why? If you don't build things, you can't keep them. You're leaving this meeting today. I want you to go back to the drawing board and say to yourself, are there areas where I'm missing it? Are there things I'm doing that are not important right now? Are there things I should be doing that will give me focus tomorrow? Hallelujah. There are things you'll be doing. Many years, I was spending a lot of time reading. Like one woman of God <laughs> the husband will read and read and read. The woman will say, nothing they change you. Every day we're still eating for <laughs> And one day, he looked at his wife, he told his wife that, these things will change. I will go great places. And one day, the door opened. One day he was at Mercedes, where they manufacture Mercedes. He was telling them the kind of designs he wants. Customized. He's not buying mass production. But this was the same person told things we are not changing. When it is tough, it means you're under trial. <laughs> when it is When it is tough, it means you that is tough for. You are under trial. 
And if you successfully pass this test, you'll get to another better place. Not just one, they said two. Customize. They said, where do you want the gear, Pastor? I want it this way. What kind of color do you want here? Huh? Church, are you in this place today? Am I ministering to somebody today? Am I helping you today that you go back and say to yourself, I won't give up. I will walk this thing. Hmm? I walk this thing. How many of you know those food I used to do try a weeks? Okay, around here. You know those food I used to carry something. Somebody used to carry that try weight before. Most of you may know him. He went to church one day, the pastor was preaching. And he said, Come and give God an offering. And the guy had the word, all the money he worked for that day. Then he was young. He brought it. He was crying. You know what it means to ring bell? Everywhere, ringing bell. And then finally you had some change. But today, he owns showrooms in this country where they sample new brand cars. What do you do with focus? Are you a kind of person that you usually drift away? Every small thing you're angry, you want to do it. You cannot, you cannot, um, you cannot do anything. Watch my lips, church. I'm just helping somebody. I'm, I'm, I'm just dragging this service because somebody needed to hear this. I, I'm stressing this one. You cannot do anything big with your life if you live like that. You need to learn to stay in a place and sit down and face it. That way, you become strong. Because if you don't have stewardship principle, how can God trust you? Eh? Do you know that God can give you a connection that will lead into billions of dollars in the next two weeks? And this morning come, like I said in the first service, I said, when you said that somebody is humble, the first question I want to ask, does he have money? If he does not have money, what will a poor person do? You're not hearing me well. Are you in this service? Are you in this service? Listen to me, church people. I said, when you say, Pastor, this guy is a very humble person. Pastor, this woman is very humble. I used to ask, do they have money? He said, they don't have money. What else would they do? It's to be humble. When you don't have money, you have to be humble. Whether it's false humility, you have to create it somehow. But when you have money, you have what is called options. You have what? Somebody's going to say, who are you? <laughs> who are you? Who are you? <laughs> he said, who are you? Who are you? Because you have money. How do you know a humble person? You have the money, you have the influence, and you're still broken. That's humility. Humility is not when you're broke. Because at that point, nobody can really know who you are. Your real colors have not come out. The real you have not shown. The real you start coming out when the money starts dropping. Then we'll know whether you see some people and greet them. Whether you come and, and look at somebody and say, Ah, my brother, how are you? My sister. Who, who is that? Then you start, there is something that money does to people. Money brings out in people <laughs> something they never even thought was there. <laughs> they never, they, them themselves never knew it was there, but the money will just bring it out. So if somebody doesn't have money and is humble, let him, that, that, it's okay. It's okay. But, well, that text to be verified when money starts coming. When you drive what you want to drive. When you live where you want to live. When you can travel for a vacation for somewhere and spend over a million dollars for a hotel, you know, for 10 days. That's possible. Because there are hotel rooms that are worth a lot of millions. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Are you in this service? Yes. Sir. Yes. So, Pastor, how did you know? Yes. 